God's love is continually poured out for us. Drink from the cup of forgiveness and compassion, dear ones. In Jesus' name, we are forgiven. Amen. Will you please stand for the call to worship? With God, all things are made new. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. The old things have passed away. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let us go to God in a time of prayer. Let us say together, God of all good gifts, we thank you and praise you. Your spirit has touched our lives, bringing wisdom, ability, strength, courage, and passion. Enable us to use our gifts in service to you and to others. In all that we do, in all that we are, may your name be glorified, that your kingdom will be with us and reside here on this earth. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to look with me at Scripture for today. The Scripture for today is Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 14. Philippians 3, verses 7 through 14. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus had made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Just to pause for a moment as we prepare ourselves. For the spoken word. Following the spoken word, we'll have some music. Pause for a moment. Let us be in prayer. Great and eternal God, we praise your holy name. And we surrender ourselves and we surrender this time of reflection into your hands. 
We ask that as we reflect on your word, your spirit will be with us, to guide us, so that we will hear your word. Speak so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Speak a word that is relevant to our lives, a word that is fresh, a word that is ordained by you. Speak so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's still very early in the new year. I'm sure some of us are still working on resolutions. And some of us, all the time, very often, are saying, this is a new year, this got to change, that got to change, we have to do this differently. We are still working out strategies as to how we will live these days in this year, 2022. And so I want to use as a subject for, for today, strategies to win the top prize in 2022, strategies to win the top prize in 2022. And I want to use as a, a text, Philippians 3, verses 7 through 14. And we're going to look at those words now. Philippians 3, verses 7 through 14, which says, Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Most people are interested in prizes. That's why some game shows are so popular. People get excited about pulling in a good prize on some of those game shows. I know we, not so long ago, I think we still have the one called The Price is Right. And you see how people get excited when they win prizes on that show. We used to, I don't know if we still have it, one called The Million Dollar Drop. Uh, or who wants to be a millionaire? I don't know if we still have them. Or, 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 or survivor. We used to have those where people are all interested about getting a prize. People go through all kinds of hardship, especially in the one called survivor. I remember that one. All kind of hardship because of the excitement or the prospect of a prize at the end of the competition. People love prizes well the year that we are in the year ahead holds the potential for a lot of great prizes for us yes i said prizes there is the prize of the right relationship with god you can think of that as a prize there is the prize of godly accomplishments in our career or profession. Yes, that too is a prize. There is a, the prize of realizing our highest potential in particular areas of endeavor in the name of Jesus Christ. That too is a prize. And as you, as we go through the year 2022, if you are like most people, you are probably wondering what is the best way to continue to approach this year so that I may attain the prize. And Paul has some good advice for us in Philippians 3, 13 to 14 about how to win the top prize, how to win the top prize. And this is good advice. And I would like to sum up this advice in the following points. One, don't focus on the past. Don't focus on the past. Devoting too much time to the negative things in your past 
can actually keep you back. This is a fact. Forgive those people you have to forgive. Those people who cross you, the year has gone ahead, forgive them. I want to use a story told by Adam Hamilton to, in, to illustrate the point and the importance of not focusing on the past. In, in one of his books, the one that we are actually studying now for Bible study, the creed, he tells this story and it goes as follows. A woman in my congregation or in the congregation I serve wrote me some time ago about forgiveness and its power. The woman said she had been struggling with an autoimmune disease that had left her disabled and she had come to believe that her unwillingness to forgive others was actually contributing to the illness. She noted that in an autoimmune illness, the body attacks itself in much the same way that she felt her bitterness and resentment were attacking her mind and spirit. The woman told me that when she finally made the decision to forgive, to release others of their emotional debts, and to relinquish her right to retribution or resentment, it was if, as, if she had experienced an immediate remission, literally gaining a new mission in life. Forgiveness brought about a healing of her heart that resulted in relief from much of her physical pain. The woman wrote, for me, forgiveness may just be the most powerful medicine there is. Forget those things that are behind. Don't focus on the past. That's what Paul said in Philippians 3 and verse 13. Let's read it. Philippians 3 and 13. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Let's focus on that. Don't focus on the past. Forgetting what lies behind. You got to forget the unfortunate experiences you had where people hurt you. And you got to find a way to say a prayer for them and wish them well. Don't let them occupy too much of your mind space because you are going to need that space in your mind for more constructive things. Remember, you have a certain kind of future, you know, and you have to be ready for that future that God has for you. You know the kind of future God talks about that he has for you? Jeremiah 29, 11. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. That is going to confound all those who want to harm you. That, that is going to confound all those who do not wish you well. Because God has a different future for you. And you can't let bitterness occupy that space that God needs to operate. So forgetting what lies behind. Forget those things that are behind. Let go of grudges you hold against people. For those grudges will slow you down and probably kill you or cause you to lose the prize. Remember, we are focusing on how to win the top prize. Forget the mistakes you have made in the past. But that is sometimes our hardest, hardest thing to do. Forgive ourselves. Forget the mistakes you have made in the past. Forgive yourself and move on. In one of the daily bread devotions that I read not so long ago, the author made the point that Albert Einstein, in a letter to his son, told him that life is like riding a bicycle. You have to keep going on. If, because if you stop, you fall down. Don't focus on the past. Don't focus on the past. You have to keep going. If you stop, you fall down. The balancing of the bicycle is dependent on your constant movement forward. Don't let mistakes and failures of the past make you stop serving God. Don't let somebody who hurt you 
or somebody who doesn't have a good will towards you make you stop serving God. Go forward serving, forgetting those things that are behind. Put them behind you. Paul was determined not to be hindered by the past. Yes, he regretted some things in his past, you know. He regretted his former confidence in the flesh. He regretted his hatred of Christ. He regretted his persecution of the church. But he did not let those things keep him back. Forgetting those things which lies behind. Don't focus on the past. Some positive things can keep us back too, you know. Because they are in the past and we keep focusing on them. Yes, there are some positive things in the past that, that we can focus on that might even keep us back. We become complacent and think we have arrived by only looking back to what we did in the past and not what is before us to do now. We become a victim of pride. And Paul had some things in his past that he might have been proud of too. His accomplishments in the ministry. I mean, his, he is pastor by excellence. The many churches he had founded. His suffering as a missionary. He might have felt that he had done enough. He was determined, however, not to look back. The prize lay ahead. I want you to get the picture. The prize lay ahead, forgetting those things which lies behind. Similarly, if we are going to win the top prize in 2022, we must forget those things that are behind. One of the ways we forget those things that are behind is to find it in our spirits to forgive. Forgive others the wrongs they have done to us. Forgive yourself. And forget those things that are behind. Don't focus on the past. Secondly, if you're going to win the top prize, if you're going to win the top prize this year, Stretch forward toward the future. Let's read that, that verse again, Philippians 3.13. Let's read it. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, watch it, and straining forward to what lies ahead. Come on, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, and give you a future full of hope. I want you to put up that, that Jeremiah passage again, you know. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not harm to give you a future with hope. And listen, if, if, if this is the future God has for you, are you going to miss it? By, by being preoccupied by things in the past and bad-minded people who don't mean you're good, you're going you're gonna to be occupied with them? No, you got to stretch forward toward the prize. That's the prize. This future that God has for you. And so that means that we must make some kind of effort. You know, straining forward means that you have to make some kind of effort. Not so. Nothing good comes easily. Nothing good. Nothing of substance comes without effort. And wherever you put effort, you are going to get results. Slipshod labor will get you nowhere. The easiest way to run down something is to do nothing. People are not going to come into our church if we don't make the effort. It's not going to just happen. Our ministries are not going to prosper if we do nothing. Our work at the, the Colin Bennett building is not going to take off uh, if, if we do nothing. The easiest way for things to just run down is to do nothing. Straining forward means that you make an effort. Laziness will get us nowhere. A lack of commitment will get us nowhere. 
Reaching forward means that you exert some effort in what you are doing. Whatever you are doing in God, to realize your full potential in Christ requires some effort. So make some effort in preparing yourself. Success is where preparation and opportunity meet. You got to prepare. Nobody's going to give you a position for which you're not qualified. And if they do, you know you wouldn't last very long in it. So spend some time this year making the effort to prepare yourself to function in the place God wants you to function. Reaching forward, stretching forward, or reaching toward the prize, stretch forward toward the prize, means that you must seize the opportunities that this new year presents you with, seize the opportunities to serve God and make an effort to do the things that you have the opportunity to do and improve on. Seize the opportunities to bless people. Yes, bless people. Seize the opportunities to improve your church. Yes, there are things we got to do here just to improve what's going on here. Seize the opportunities to improve yourself. In saying these words, Paul knew that this was no time to become indifferent. Souls were lost. He had to make an effort. Make an effort. Nothing good comes easily. You got to make an effort. The church needed him now. Never mind how much he had hurt the church in the past. He wanted to accomplish the purpose that God had for him. Since God saved him, so he kept driving himself forward, pushing himself hard to reach that goal. He kept making the effort. There was never time he wasn't putting out his best effort. It must be no different with us. It must be no different with us. Nothing good comes easily. Nothing good comes by slipshod labor. If you want things to fall down, do it badly. Do it any old how. It will fall down easily. It's very easy for anything good to run down. Real fast. All we have to do is nothing. And it will run down. And so, we must approach this year trying to win the top prize. Forgetting what lies behind. Yes, don't focus on the past. But we must do this. We must stretch forward toward the future and make the effort to realize the best future that God has in store for us. We must stretch forward toward the goal. But finally, let me say this. Let me say this. We have to move forward despite opposition. Move forward despite opposition. Philippians 3.14 I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. I'm saying to win the top prize we must Move forward despite opposition. Some of us don't like the word opposition. Anything you're doing, you know, you know you have opposition. Ask Joe Biden. In his own team, he has opposition. In his own team. You're trying to do something good. And... And there are people who will say it's evil. So you have opposition. Opposition is part of this life. I mean, if, if, if you've never had any opposition in your life, don't worry. All you have to do is live long enough. Absolutely. Just live long enough. You'll, you'll get opposition. But Paul said, I press on 
I press on toward the goal for the prize, verse 14. You know, it means you have to move forward even with those opposing forces. Whatever opposing forces may be in your way, keep your eyes on the goal and press on. Keep your eyes on the prize. When you press on, it means that you inevitably leave others behind. And guess what? You got to go some places some people can't go. You got to go some places that some people you love, they can't go there with you. They're not of that mindset. They, they, they might even become a, opposing forces to this future that God has for you. But you can't be worried about that. You have to move forward despite opposition. You have to press on. Never mind who refuses to go or who can't go. You have to press on. Press on though people bad talk you. Press on though evil, though, though, though people malice you. Press on even though people lie on you. Press on even though people undermine you. Press on even though people deceive you. Press on even though people try to sabotage you. Because greater is he in you than he that is in the world. You got to press on. I press on. I press on toward the goal of this high call in Christ. Press on because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you are going with Jesus, ain't nobody can stop you. You've heard me say that before. If you're going with Jesus, ain't nobody can stop you. Eventually, they will have no option but to stop. So press on. But they won't be able to stop you. So press on toward the goal. That is the goal. That is the goal. Press on towards the goal of this high calling in Christ. And that goal, first of all, is to be more like Jesus, isn't it? That goal is to be more like Jesus. It's to accomplish that future that God has for you. Yes. And part of that future, the most important part of that future, is to be more like Jesus, isn't it? 1 Peter 2 and verse 21. Or to this, you have been called. That's the calling. That's the goal. Because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. You know, part of the goal is to become more like Jesus. Even the reason things happen in our lives is to make us more like Jesus. You know, some stuff happened to us, you know, and we think it's the worst thing ever to happen to us in life. And really the point is this. When we come through it all, we realize we are better off. We realize we wouldn't exchange it for the world because we are more like Jesus. We are better people. Romans 8, 28 to 29. We know. We're not guessing, you know. We're not guessing. Check these words. We know that all things Work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. We know all the stuff that happened to us. It's making us more like Jesus. All the stuff that happened to us, all that people think would destroy us, it's making us more like Jesus and we're not guessing. We know, we know that all things work together for good for them that love God. So we press on in spite of adversity. We press on in spite of opposing forces. Because this God is helping us to realize our full potential in Jesus. So, as we face this 2022, we don't know what's in it. 
But we know that there are some strategies that we can employ so that we can face this year. And according to Paul, those strategies involve that we don't focus on the past. Find a way to forgive people. According to Paul, those strategies involve that we stretch forward toward the future. Make an effort. Do something. Do something. Things don't just happen. Do something. Good. Do something before something. Do you? This strategy involves that we move forward despite opposition. I wish I had better news for you, but there are going to be people opposing you. We move forward despite opposition. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. I, I want to give anybody who wants to make a commitment to Christ today, I, I want to give you that chance. If, if in your heart you're feeling today is the day, I want to make my commitment to Christ, a special commitment to Christ. You feel you need special prayers. Um, I'm not singling you out, but I'll just like you to stand wherever you are. You don't have to come to the altar. If today is a day you're making a special commitment to Christ, I just want you to stand wherever you are, wherever you are. You're making a commitment, and you want me to pray with you about this, this new commitment, you're committing yourself to Christ in a new way today. Stand where you are. Just want to pray with you for a moment. Awesome God, awesome God. We want you to accept the commitment of your people today. You said, God, if we believe in our hearts, the Lord Jesus Christ, and confess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, and God, you raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. You understand the commitment your people are making to you today. We ask that you receive those commitments, receive them. And even as your people stand before you, we ask that you empower them with your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would be their guide and that you would be their light for the year that is ahead, oh God. We pray for your direction in this year, 2022. We pray that you will strengthen their resolve Strengthen the resolve that they make today for those who are committing themselves to you. As well as we pray for the rest of us, all of us, Lord God, but especially for those who are committing themselves afresh or for the first time to you today. Strengthen their resolve. Strengthen their commitment to forget what lies behind. Strengthen their resolve to strain forward toward the achievement of that goal that you have for them, that future you have for them. Strengthen and prosper their resolve to press toward the goal of right relationship with you. And so, God, we just ask for your special anointing and all who are standing. That special transaction. Let them know and let them feel that indeed something happened that is going to be different. That is going to be better. That is going to be more powerful. That you are strengthening them. That you are renewing them. That you are inspiring them. Because they, we, can do all things through Christ. Who strengthened us. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time we're going to have some music. We're going to worship God in, in song. Good morning, everybody. Is God good? Amen. Amen. Isn't God good this morning? Pastor said, press on. Pastor said, press on. 
because God knows what he has for us. Amen. Amen. I mean, that message was so clear where I felt like I was in one room with one person. Amen. Because sometimes the message is for you. Amen. And I thank God for the message today. And I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm glad to see each and every one of you this morning. I hope that so far that your new year is, you know, a little better than we had last year, even though that was next door. Amen. Amen. This morning, I just ask everyone to just stand with us as we go into praise and worship and we give God what he truly deserves this morning. Amen. Through our good and through our bad times. Amen. Oh, Lord, we praise you. How many praise the Lord this morning for all that he's done to you? Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, we praise you. 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 We come to give you glory. We praise you. Oh, I was thinking the other day about the joy that came my way. And those things that had me bound. I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the days. But today I stand before you with nothing but praise, oh Lord. We praise you. Come to give you glory. joy that came my way, how we took away my frown and those things that had me bound. I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the days, but today I stand before you with victory and praise, oh Lord. Don't believe he 
never said there would be trials never said i wouldn't fall never said that everything would go the way i wanted to go but when my back is against the wall and i feel a hope is gone i just lift my hands up to
could say a word. If I could say a word. God. Are we getting another one? Do you want another yes, song? Yes, we want another one. Yes, let's sing another song. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the song that came to mind when you asked for another one. Amen. Y'all just gonna have to follow me. Yes, God is real. <laughs> He's real Free in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has washed right. and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is Real in 
for us to hold on to but a gift for us to share. Gifts from you meant for giving. As we offer our tithe and our offerings, prompt us to commit more than dollars. But to see the gifts you have written on our hearts and to share generously of these as well. We pray these words in the name of Jesus. In whose name we pray, in whose way we follow, in whose love we are eternally grateful. Amen. So I pronounce the benediction, and I ask you after the benediction just to take your seats for a minute, just for a couple of announcements. God's joy is poured out for you so that you might be a blessing to others. God will continually walk and work with you, relieving your burdens and giving you strength. Go and share what God has given you. Go and proclaim what God's love, that God's love is here. Go in the power of God's spirit to make all things new. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.